Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your host, Angie Scott and Barb Carey. Another episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer in this is your co-host Barb Carey in my house. We're in my actual kitchen recording this, and I have a very special guest, um, Allison Roberts. Allison, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you very much for asking me. It's an honor. Well, I'm glad you're here. You know, and uh, you know, we should uh, Ricky's videotaping. We should make like a real studio here. Let's make a studio somewhere, and then yeah. we can have like a Johnny Carson kind of desk. Yeah, let's Wouldn't do that it. Be cool. Can I have something like I that? Agree. You know, she's Allison does have the coffee cup going in. What do you got in there? Sparkling water. Yeah, me too, right here, <laughs> as evidence you can see. But anyway, Allison, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. And let me just uh, explain to our viewers um, my history with Allison. And um, I think we go back almost 10 years, maybe not quite. No, it's 10. 10 years, yeah. yeah. And she was uh, kind of a guest at, I think it was the third fish camp that ever was. And that was on uh, Lake Petenwell. We did, we just were camping and shore fishing, no boats or anything. Right. Allison, do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm surprised that you don't remember my dad bringing the pop-up and setting it up for me. Oh, yes, you were the one in camping. And you were glamping. I was. The rest of us were camping. Right. You were glamping. I had two king size uh, beds pop out. And, but uh, we definitely had a really good time on that trip. I don't think most of us really knew much of what we were doing, but you guys came with a lot of information. I still have some of that information, like a little in here and some in photos, but I've used it ever since, that's for sure. Oh, I know you posted some photos uh, a while back about that fish camp 10 years ago, and I saw some of the photos of some of the learning um, materials. I think we had a, a poster made up about where's your bait in the water column, and I still have that today, and you made reference to that. I think we talked about it today, actually, when we were fishing. Right, right. Yeah, that's always stuck with me, just the different layers of water, and it's something I've always shared with anybody that fishes with me, too, that you know, it's not just a matter of throwing something out there. You, you have an opportunity all the way from you know the bottom of the water up to the top to, to try and catch various types of fish so it's it's probably been one of the things I've used more than any other you know tidbit that I learned that weekend was just playing with the depths in the water right it is an easy thing people often overlook come on come on she's just she's like dying to be in the podcast every time we start recording she's like right here want to be part of it I have a cat that does the same thing when I do karaoke. <laughs> in your house, yeah. you and the cat, yeah. cat karaoke, yeah. and they, that could be something. <laughs> so uh, the reason that, you know, Allison kind of, you know, this was 10 years ago, that time she kind of moved away and then kind of resurfaced, was that a, a, a one year ago almost? Yeah, it was actually at uh, fish camp last year because I, I had an opportunity to go and a friend was going and she offered to drive. I wasn't driving at that time and... I, I wanted to kind of reconnect with a few people and I didn't have any idea as to who was going to be there. I really didn't make much much of a plan other than I just wanted to fish and I, I, I had always remembered that being a part of something with Wisconsin Women Fish always felt really comfortable and, you know, welcoming. So I took a shot at trying it and, and it really changed a lot of things just going to that weekend last year. It, uh, it really sparked uh, some and refueled some interest that I've always had, but in a way that I never would have realized the type of year that I've had this year. So let's uh, kind of get caught up here now. Ten years ago, I mean, you were strong, you were physically active, you are golf all over the place. In the meanwhile, your life, you moved to Hawaii, you live in California. I think I saw you uh, several years after that. You owned a restaurant in uh, yeah. the southern, southwest part of Wisconsin. So you were like a little miss active, get around the country kind of gal. Well, I'm still get around the country, <laughs> but yeah, I just have a couple of extra feet now. Yeah, I got I got hurt a few years ago at work, and uh, unfortunately, it's not something that's resolved itself yet. But at the same time, it gave me an opportunity to experience things a little differently. But up until last year's fish camp, really all I'd been doing is kind of sustaining, like just trying to go through most of my experiences with the least amount of discomfort and 
and not uh, not too much challenge, really. And it was fish camp where I really realized again, like I felt the desire of challenge. I, rem I remember uh, meeting TJ there, uh, one of the other members in the group, and being so like like driven to want to like catch something that I could turn around and go like, TJ, look what I caught, you know, and, <laughs> and, and that just led to another, you know, interest to try and do something else where I could go, I, I could have something to say with some of these other people that are catching fish and, and show that I could catch fish too. And I, I didn't really know what, the, what, what I was getting myself into. I just kept trying to do something and something led to something else and something else and something else. And I've literally, I think I've been to what, five or six Wisconsin Women Fish events. Um, even the next event I was invited to was the Ice Fishing 101, which I'd never done ice fishing before in my life. And I barely ever even been on ice in my life, like maybe 30 actual seconds in my whole life had I been on ice. So being invited to the 101 was one of those things where I felt confident doing it because I felt like I was going to, again, be with a group of people that I knew that I could feel safe with. And uh, that's what started my whole shoes on my crutches thing, too, is I, I needed to feel safe with on ice. And when I got those shoes, uh, that really changed everything even more so, like in a way that I never, I never anticipated. So this uh, episode we're also doing a video of, and uh, Allison, show what we're talking about here. So this is how you get around since you've become injured. This is kind of, what's that Well, called? not since I've become injured. It actually, I spent... I, I, I wasn't needing the crutches when I first got hurt. My situation has progressively and continues to get worse. But when I ultimately needed the crutches, I, I just had the regular bottoms on them. But when I got invited to the fishing one oh ice fishing one oh one, I, I wanted to make sure that I could, you know, be safe on the ice. And I, I was looking for little boots and I found these little boots online and then I found baby cleats that fit them. So now I put baby cleats on my boots. And that was the first thing that really made me realize, like, I can use these boots to do other things. And I have, like, I've traveled literally all over the country between, you know, sand dunes to, to lava rock, to blowholes, to, to trout creeks, to you name it. Like, I've, I, I just, I travel everywhere with these and I really feel not only more stable, I have an odd additional sense of confidence and that combined with the extra level of support from a group like Wisconsin Women Fish, combined with, with a passion to do something I enjoy, with a drive to show other people that I can do it, has like led to so many of the experiences that I've had this year. Like I've literally probably physically met, what, well over 100 plus members in our group this year, like easily, like one-on-one, -on -one, had conversations. And and been out on individual experiences with so many as well. It, it, and I never thought that. Like, like uh, I don't know if this is what you're intending for this interview, but to, to, to be very bored in New Year's of this very year, I spent my New Year's Eve trying to convince other people on Craigslist not to kill themselves. Like, that's where my year started this year, you know? Mm. And, and I had some losses this year. But the, what I've gained this year is more than I feel like I've, I've had in an extremely long time. Well, this is, you know, I mean, everyone that sees you at these events, you're an inspiration. And for those Good. of you that aren't watching um, the video, you're just listening to this, I want to describe what we're talking about here. She's, she mentions a crutch, but it's kind of not a regular crutch that we're all probably visualizing when we hear the word crutch, the old wooden, you yeah. know, with the sponge handle. This is a... They're called forearm crutch, crutches. Forearm crutches. Yep. And on the very bottom, usually where there's that rubber thing that kind of gives you a little bit of a grip, she replaced that with a designer boot. <laughs> I really suggest... It's a Timberland. A tim oh, it, it is, is a, a Timberland. A Timberland boot, <laughs> an infant Timberland boot. Yep. That's the end of it. And... Uh, I'd try to get over and watch this episode just to see that, if nothing else, because it's pretty cool looking. And when you show up at events and you're, you know, kind of walking around with that and you got your boot on, if you're on the ice, it's got the little cleats on it. I mean, people are so inspired by you. And, uh, I mean, you're out there. I've never heard you ever complain once about anything. And I know sometimes <laughs> it's a rougher than others, 
And, you know, just kind of on following you on Facebook, you're like fish. You get to fish way more than I do. I do have a little problem with that, Allison. I mean, you're out fishing way more than me. Now, tell me some of these adventures that you've been going on. Because not even a group adventure. You are going on your own all the time. Tell me what it's a life in, the, in your, your fishing life here, what you're doing with your yourself here. It pretty much just goes from a, a, a desire to not uh, get mired in what can be the hardest parts of life right now, uh, which are ever present. And so my... <laughs> Stella! <laughs> Oh my God! Lucky you can't smell this on the podcast because the dog has a problem. You said she was done with that. I know she had an endoscopy. As our our tangent here, the dog had an endoscopy. She still has really bad gas. So, oh my God! Gas break. This is uh, I don't know. Angie's going to have her hands full editing this one. But anyway, you've been out there fishing your brains out. What now? And explain to your the scenario because it's amazing where you go. Well, um, this year is literally compiled with when when I was at fish camp last year. Um, hoy, I'm getting mouthfuls. <laughs> Should we both take a break? Yeah, Well, we're back, recovered, and uh, Allison it was just going to um, like mention some of the places you've been able to fish. Just the, I've been following you. It's amazing. Uh, well, I tried to fish most of southern Los Angeles and that part of southern California throughout all of the Los Angeles mountains. I didn't find much water there that you could fish. I was very lucky and have been lucky enough to spend a lot of time here in Wisconsin this year. Uh, and that's where I've done a significant amount of the fishing, especially getting really involved and uh, passionate about trout fishing. So a lot of trout streams I was able to discover this year, which was something very new to me, learning how to tra traverse those kind of spaces. And that just kept expanding into everything from barge fishing to dam fishing to culvert fishing to uh, I fished in Hawaii. I took friends who'd never been fishing uh, out into the Honolulu Bay and we went fishing. I've uh, fished in Minnesota. Uh, I've got one more state that I want to fish this year because I have a five state goal for the year. Um, and and frankly, I think I, I know probably a good hundred plus miles worth of creeks and streams between Crawford and Vernon County just from the thousands of hours I've spent out fishing in them this year. Well, that's a beautiful area. That whole Driftless region has some of the best trout streams in the nation yeah. and uh it's fabulous water out there and it right. it's there i think a lot of that's pretty accessible a lot of it's farm farmland right. and stuff and you right. you've been taking new people out just people that you meet and right. i know you get a lot of enjoyment about that and you just kind of graduated from this uh, dnr um edu angler educator right. course right. tell me Our a little three. bit about what you foresee maybe doing with some of this stuff well, what I'd really like to do, which I, I have been doing this year, is uh, teaching other people just how to get out there and try trout fishing specifically. It's something that I've found that's very accessible, as you mentioned, to me. Uh, it's a very slow-paced type of fishing. Uh, you have to take a lot of patience and uh, be very careful in how you uh, traverse the land because the trout are so skittish. So for me, being that I'm moving so slow, it's a perfect thing to, to focus on. And taking other people out there has been just really um, magical. It, you know, not to use such a cheesy, might be cheesy term, but it really has been because people experience something well beyond just the fishing. Whether it be connecting with nature, connecting with themselves, us connecting in conversation, whatever it is, there's, there's a larger experience than just catching that trout. Well, and I think I read one post you made, it was about... Um how one fishing situation, you met some gals and you went fishing, kind of morphed into like numerous future interactions just with the questions going back and forth and what about this, what about, you know, so suddenly you're a mentor for somebody. Right, I, I hadn't expected that. It was actually just a conversation I was having with about half a dozen different women at a festival earlier this year. 
and uh, one of the younger ladies was saying she wanted to get back in touch with where her food comes from. And uh, what was really fantastic is how that, how that tied into yesterday's class too about the you know water to table program that the DNR has. And so when I took this young lady and her friend out fishing, uh, I was able to show them how accessible it is literally within just like five miles of where they live to be able to walk along a stream and, and catch trout you know very easily just through some kind of small steps of, of you know repetition. And uh, having been able to do that, uh, it was so exciting for them that they then both individually contacted me afterwards and sent me thank you individual emails and then one wanted to surprise the other one with a fishing rod for her birthday which just happened I think like a week ago and then the one that got the rod sent a thank you saying because she knew that I had given the recommendation about the rod and it just you know yeah there's probably been nine or ten you know kind of cross thank yous and, and questions and inquiries and and you know looking forward to future opportunities all from a conversation that started at a festival about fishing. Right. So, it's amazing. Yeah. It? And the, the relationships you make while you're fishing are some of the best, I think, that that I, in my life, I know that's where the better ones have started. I agree. And I, I that's really, too, where I, I would like to, again, uh, reiterate that my experience that I had 10 years ago with, with the small group that it was uh, with Wisconsin Women Fish was so so intense in a you know like felt so relaxing felt so welcoming felt so you know supportive amongst those people and what's really interesting to me now is that i didn't even realize at that point to the degree in which all of us so many of us that i still know and are still members now were just as fresh as i was in the experience and so here yet even though we were not part of this what is now known as this supportive Wisconsin Women Fish group. It was a group of women that you had, you know, invited to get together to fish that inherently, you know, kind of behaved that way that I believe has compounded on itself year after year to the degree that it is part of the, you know, one of the basis of this group is to be supportive of each other and to be cheerleaders of each other and to, you know, want to see each other succeed. Absolutely. It, some, a few of those gals are still here. One of them just yeah. recently passed away. I know that. I mean, her, Char Day, bless her heart, she yeah. was at that event and, you know, kind of reminds you that life is short and you can't sit at home waiting on the couch to no. feel better, have something change or improve. You got to get right. out there after it right now because right. tomorrow is never guaranteed. Right. Well, and I've shared with many people that in my specific circumstance, I could hurt just as much sitting at home trying to choose choose between one TV show or one movie I've already seen or or what have you or be in the same amount of pain, but go out and experience trying to catch a fish, listening to the eagles, watching a deer, you know, looking at loons, uh, just watching leaves and listening to the wind or the rustle of corn leaves or the, or the flow of grass. Those seem like small things, but in my life, they're huge and I appreciate being able to get out and, and experience them and share those experiences with other people. Well, you said that so beautifully, which is a perfect segue to the next phase of what I just want to talk about with you about is you are an actual gifted writer and you um, have written several stories that of different events. She told that, me to look at the camera every once in a while. Different events that you like the brown trout fishing. You just, you know, we have another event coming up on um, this uh, Wisconsin Wind Fish event coming up in January and um, or February, first week yeah. of February. And so last year after that event, you attended and you wrote a story about it and you just reposted it and the gals just went crazy over it. They just love that so much. And you frequently will follow up a event or a fishing um activity with a written story and you are so gifted um what uh where do you get that inspiration i mean has writing that that talent been with you always or is this something you're trying to develop or tell me about the writing piece of it uh literally ever since i could put words together i've been writing stories it's been something i've been doing ever since i was a very small child is writing poetry or writing stories or 
you know, imagining things that I that I, I wanted to share with other people. And uh, it's something that I, I very much enjoy doing. I love being able to, it, it's the sharing part. I love being able to share an experience with other people that may not be able to do it for their reasons or accessibility or, or don't have the time or the resources. I'm very fortunate in being able to have time and resources right now. You know, even within my circumstances, I'm, I still recognize how lucky I am to be able to have experiences that I can then write about and offer to other people to vicariously have an experience of. So yeah, it's, it's just been something I've, I've always done and I, I just haven't always used a platform to share it as much as I do now. Well, I know I, we have posted that story or in, right in the Brown Trout event and people said, geez, I wasn't gonna go, but after I read that story, now I wanna sign up because it, you made right. it sound so exciting and just the way you describe things and what we're going to do is um, we're actually going to be starting um, a guest blog for um, the podcast and we're going to share some of those stories that you've uh, written and you also have beautiful photographs too that you take on your um, trip so I'm sure as this podcast goes our wonderful editor there and creative director is going to be putting some of those photos in and uh, adding them to the podcast. So that's uh, another good reason to watch it on Waypoint TV. But um, Allison, always an inspiration. I am so glad you're back um, living in Wisconsin and back from Hawaii and are able to spend more time out on the water with us, uh, both me, you know, just as friends and as a, a participant in some of these Wisconsin Women Fish events. And it's always a pleasure to hang around with you. Thank you. You're an inspiration to so many. And uh, we'll, I look forward to reading some more of your stories. Thank you. It's, it, the inspiration is mutual. Literally, I, I am fueled by the experiences that I see everybody in the group doing and, and even people outside of, of our group. You know, there's, there's so many people out there, you know, struggling in their own way and trying to follow their own passions. And I, I, I love just watching people try and uh, I'm so glad to, to have a, at least a small piece of it in a direct way by being a member of Wisconsin Women Fish and, and by being uh, a friend of, of you. You're, you're an inspiration and have been for a really long time. I've seen this group from, come from you know, a much smaller piece to a much more you know, powerful experience and uh, I'm happy to be a part of it, so thank you. Well, what do we say? We're better together. And uh, thank you all for listening and subscribing. And um, we appreciate all the support you gals are giving us on the podcast. And we love telling stories like Allison's here. And uh, look for that uh, some of those stories she writes. We'll post those as well. And thank you. We'll be back.